Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Welcome to New Directions Apostolic Ministries. Amen. We are happy to be here once again to welcome you. We are happy that you're here with us. Amen. Hallelujah. We thank God for you. Um, we thank God for the opportunity to, to be able to come before you. Amen. God is good. God is great. And he is greatly to be praised. Amen. And we come to uh, share with you the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. And share with you what it means to be made alive in Christ. Amen. That's our message today. And we hope that you're able to get something from it. We hope that you're able to be able to take something away from it to help somebody else. As long as helping yourself. Amen. I'm, um, we're still on this, this uh, quest on discipleship. Um, when we started this ministry, we started with the idea of of of, of helping us not only um, become disciples, but also to go out and make disciples as we were commanded by the Lord Jesus Christ in the Gospel of St. Matthew, chapter number 28, verse number 19, to go out, therefore, and make disciples, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Teaching them to observe all things whatsoever he has commanded us. Amen. So that's what we are endeavoring to do, to go out and make disciples. Amen. But we realize that in order to make a disciple, you must first be a disciple. And a disciple is nothing more than, uh, not to say it's like it's meaningless, but it's, it's not more than just uh, being uh, a student of the scriptures, being one who's able to learn. Amen. But also um, being able to, uh, to teach, you know, amen. So what we do is we learn the gospel, amen. We are converted by it, right, and through the new birth process. And then once we begin to grow in the Lord, we also should be sharing that which we are learning with other people, amen, and helping them to become born again as well, amen. God, the scripture lets us know that God is not willing that any should perish, but that all come to repentance, amen. And then um, the Lord lets us know in 2 Corinthians chapter number 5, verse number um, 17 onward, letting us know that we are, are ambassadors for Christ, and also God has given us the ministry of reconciliation. God wants to reconcile mankind back to himself, but he does that through individuals, amen. So we have a, a mandate on us to go out and teach and to preach and to inspire others, amen, to go out and do the same, amen. So that's what it's all about. So we, we want to share just a little bit with you today, amen, um, about being, what it, what did, what does it mean to be uh, made alive in Christ? What actually takes place? Amen. And so, um, I want you also to follow us on social media. Amen. Follow us on Facebook, follow us on YouTube. Amen. And I'll be coming to Instagram soon. Amen. But for now, Facebook and YouTube, follow us there. Amen. Make a comment, drop your comments in the comment section. Amen. Um, like, share, and subscribe. Subscribe to our channels, amen, you know, to our uh, YouTube channel. Subscribe, amen. Let people know. Share it. Share it with others. Share it with, with your coworkers. Share it with your friends and, and, and your family, amen. Share the videos. Share, amen. All right, so um, God, he's really concerned about us as the saints of God, as people of God, as, as human beings. God is concerned about us. Amen. He wants to reconcile us back to himself, as I said. So um, let's get into this lesson. Amen. I'm anxious to get into, I'm not really anxious, but I, I'm excited about getting into this le uh, lesson. Amen. The Bible lets us know to be anxious for nothing. Amen. But I'm excited. Amen. I hope that you are excited, excited too. Amen. All right. So let's get into this. Um, as we go on, may, we're made alive in Christ. Amen. And our, our verses of scripture we're, we're um, uh, presenting today is in, in the book of Ephesians, chapter number two, verses number one through five. Although we're going to cover um, perhaps next week, picking up with verses six through ten. All right. We're going to read today verses one through ten. 
and then cover one through five. And then next week, the Lord says the same. If the Lord should, should tarry and I live to see it, then it will be verses six through 10. Amen. All right. So um, let us begin. Amen. So as we continue on, the Lord lets us know that, uh, you know, in Ephesians chapter number one or two, I'm sorry, um, chapter number two, uh, verse number one, we're made alive in Christ. Amen. And this is from the Amplified Version. I'm reading from the Amplified Version. And you, he made alive when you were spiritually dead and separated from him because of your transgressions and sins in which you once walked. You were, you were following the ways of this world influenced by this present age in accordance with the prince of the power of of the air, Satan, the spirit who is now at work in the disobedient, the unbelieving, who fight against the purpose of God. Amen. So he lets us know right out the gate that um, we have been made alive. You know, we were spiritually dead and separated from him because of transgressions wrongdoings and sins sin separated the human race from the god who created him right so god made a way for us to be reconciled back to himself amen it's all about reconciliation it's all about being reconciled to god amen god is we don't want to enter into eternity separated from god amen god wants to reunite us with himself in the kingdom of God. Amen. So in verse 2, he says, in which you once walked, right? So once walked is past tense. So he's talking to the Ephesians and the saints today. You once walked that way. You once walked according to the sinful nature. You were following the ways of this world, influenced by the this present age. Amen. Today, there's a lot of uh, uh, um, spirits at work in the world today. Amen. Not that there are, there are more than before. I think they're more bold now because of um, the leadership of this world. Amen. All right. So, but um, what's happening is um, this world is has always been walking contrary to the will of God. Amen. And so we being born in this world, these influences, we were born into all of this stuff, you know, so then we had no power or ability not to do this, not to do the things of the world. But God, had, who is rich in mercy, he has made a way for us to, or, you know, he has enabled us actually through the new birth experience to be able to overcome and to be separated from the world so that these things are no longer a big influence in our lives. Amen. So he says, in accordance with the prince of the power of the air. That's Satan. That's the devil. He is the God of this world. Satan is the God of this world. Amen. Of this world. Amen. He's, his imp they're ruling, Right? But they do not rule the child of God because the child of God has the Holy Ghost on the inside, enabling him, right, or her to walk victorious in this present life. So he's, he, he's letting us know that, right, in which you once walked, right, you were following the ways of this world influenced by his present age in accordance with the prince of the power of the air, that's Satan, the spirit who is now at work. In the disobedient, those who are not who, who who are not in the faith, those who are who may have may know truth, or don't, or have chosen not to walk according to truth, Amen. The unbelieving, who fight against the purpose of God, Amen. There are those in the world who fight against the purpose of God. Therefore, you must yourself put on the whole armor of God. 
that you may be able to withstand the wiles of the devil. Amen. And those who will come against you, those who will 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 will, will try to subvert you, amen, and, and cause you to stumble and cause you to go back. Amen. The devil and 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 those of the world are not happy with the way you're walking if you're walking in Christ. You know, because the Bible lets us know if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away, and behold, all things have become new. Amen. So just arm yourselves. Arm yourselves to fight. Be ready to fight. Amen. And I'm not talking about physically. I'm talking about spiritually. I've been saying for the past few weeks that this is a spiritual warfare that we're in. This warfare is spiritual one. Amen. But we are able, I said last week, that we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. That's the Lord Jesus Christ. We are more than conquerors. You know, conquerors go forth and they handle business. We are more than that. Amen. Through him, through the Lord Jesus Christ, the one who, who, uh, who, who um, enables us to be victorious in this present world. Amen. All right. So then verse number three, among these unbelievers, we all once lived in the passions of our flesh, our behavior governed by the sinful self. Amen. Our behavior was governed by the sinful self, the old you, right? The old you was in control. And there can only be an old you if you've been born again. If you've been born again, that old nature is still there. But you must you must uh, uh, take control. You must handle it. Amen. You must take control over it to and it and, and, and you control it by the Spirit of God. Amen. Amen. So he lets us know, continuing on, indulging the desires of human nature without the Holy Spirit. Amen. See? Without the Holy Spirit. And the impulses of of the sinful mind. We were by nature children under the sentence of God's wrath, just like the rest of mankind. Amen. We were we no different. Amen. The only thing that, that uh makes us different is the Holy Ghost. Amen. And the baptism in Jesus' name. But if it weren't for that, we would be just like the rest of them, which we were. He, he lets us know we were once that. But now we're you know, we're different, but he's making it clear what's at work there, you know. Don't t don't think it's nothing. Don't think don't don't think that oh oh you know it's nothing. I can just do this. No. We're able to do what we do by because of God, because of his spirit. Amen. We're that's what makes us. I have no power of my own. You know, and I talked about a few weeks ago about how, you know, how we make those New Year's resolutions every year. You know, those who know what I'm talking about um, every year. I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do a lot of things no more. And by morning, we find ourselves having done most of the stuff we said we weren't going to do no more. Amen. That's because we had no power to overcome. We had no power not to do whatever we said we, were, we weren't going to do. But God... God has stepped into our lives and, and has given us of his spirit. Thereby, we're able to do the things that we said we're going to do. Amen. That's the enabling power. Amen. But with that, we got to have a changed mind. you got to have a, 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 a mind to live for God, a mind to change. Change. Amen. you got to be able to be willing to change. You know, God makes us able, but you got to be willing to change. Amen. All right, so um, we're not to be like the rest of mankind. All right, in verse number four, but God being so very rich in mercy because of his great and wonderful love, which he loved us, amen, which he loved us, even when we were spiritually dead and separated from him because of our sins, he made us spiritually alive together with Christ. For by his grace, his undeserved favor and mercy, you have been saved from God's judgment. Amen. Saved from God's judgment. And he raised us 
up together with him, right? Raised us up together with him when we were when we believed and seated us with him in the heavenly places because we are in Christ Jesus. Amen. All right? He's this is an awesome position we have. He has raised us up together with him when we believe and seated us. He has seated us with him in the heavenly places. Amen. Seated with him. Amen. That's awesome. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, because we are in Christ Jesus. Amen. Verse number Number, number, oh, I, I missed one. All right, so, okay, six. I missed one. And there's some changes around there. All right, so, all right, verse number nine. Um, verse number eight. Yeah, let's go on. I'm sorry. Verse number nine. Not as, as a result of your your works, nor your attempts to keep the law so that no one will be able to boast or take credit in any way for his salvation. I had, I brought nothing to the table. I can't boast about what I've done to um, acquire salvation. I can't take credit for it. Neither can you. Amen. We're saved by the grace of God. For we are his workmanship, his own masterwork, a work of art, created in Christ Jesus, reborn from above. Amen. That's born again. Spiritually transformed, renewed, ready to be used for good works. Amen. Which God prepared for us beforehand, taking Pass, which he said, so that we would walk in them, living the good life, which he prearranged and made ready for us. Amen. This, this thing is awesome. We did nothing. God did it all. He prearranged this whole thing. Because of his foreknowledge, he preordained all of this. He knew before we were born that we would be saved. Amen. Amen. So God is in control. God is concerned about us. Amen. I told you God had a plan, and he's working his plan. Amen. God has a plan, the master plan that, that will, that will, that's able to say that it works. It works. God's plan works. Amen. All right? So here we go. Verses number one, uh, uh, one through ten, um, as an overview. All right, in this paragraph, Paul gives three reasons why God wanted to save people. One, to show His love, and that's verses one through six. God wanted to uh, show His love. Amen. Number two, He wanted to show His grace. Verses seven through nine. Amen. God wants to show his grace. Amen. And then number three, he to he, he, God wants to show his workmanship by our doing good works. Amen. That's in verse number 10. Amen. So that's the three um, areas that we're going to deal with in, you know, today and, and, and next week again, if, if the Lord should tarry. All right. So in verse one, it says, um, Paul lets us know here in verse number one, dead i.e. separated from God because of sin. This is spiritual death. If a person continues in this state by continuing to reject Jesus Christ, spiritual death becomes the second death. That's eternal separation from God. Revelation chapter 20, verse 14. Amen. That's what you don't want. You don't want to be eternally separated from God. Amen. There is a way for you to escape the judgment 
the the wrath of God right now. There's a way. God has God has made a way for you to escape His judgment. Amen. But it's on His terms. Amen. You must receive the Lord Jesus Christ. Right. Believe on Him. Repent and be baptized into the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Amen. That's how you escape. And then continuing on with him, living in holy life, separated unto him, and and and, and, and equip basically as we as we separate ourselves and we present our bodies to him as a living sacrifice, Romans chapter number 12, verse 1, um, that he's able to transform us, Romans chapter 12, verse 2, by the renewing of our minds. Amen. He tells us to be ye transformed and be not conformed to, well, basically be not conformed to this uh, life, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may be able to prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Amen. So transformation must take place in your life in order for you to be, one, pleasing to God, and two, be used by God. You can't be used by God if your mind hasn't been transformed or if your heart hasn't been transformed. You must be born again. Amen. All right? So you that's the only way. God is, God, he's, God has a work for us to do, but we must do the work on his terms. Amen. You must do the work on his terms. Verse number two, he says, uh, it talked about the prince, that spirit. Both words refer to Satan, children of disobedience. That's a Hebrewism for disobedient people. Amen. That's in verse number two. Verse number two. Amen. Verse number three, he, he brings about the idea of conversion. Manner of life. Or conversation, I'm sorry. Conversation, that's a manner of life. It's not talking about talk and conversation, talk and chatter. It's talking about your way of life, your social relationships. Amen. God is concerned about our social relationships. Who are you joined up to right now? Are they walking in the will of God? Are they um, submitting themselves to the will of God? Or are they on, on their own little project going on? Is their own, you know, their own little ideas going on? You know, and what they want to get out of this life and all the things of the maxims of this world. That's all important now because God's judging our conversation, our manner of life, our social relationships. Man's basic nature has been affected by sin. So you can't, your best friend can't be a sinner. If you're a saint, your best friend should not be a sinner. Amen. The Bible lets us know, how can two walk together except they agree? Amen. You you have to uh, come out from among them and be separate, says the Lord. Amen. You must be uh, with people of like precious faith who are walking in the same direction that God's taking you. Amen. You want to be victorious in your life? Start walking with saints. Start walking with saved people. People who People who are under the will of God. People who are under the, 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 the leading of the Holy Ghost. People who are allowing the Holy Ghost to lead them through this life. Amen. Who are depending on the word of God to change their thoughts and change their ideas. Amen. Our, our, our very thoughts ought to be governed by the will of God. Amen. Our very decision makings should be governed by the will of God. Amen. By the word of God. Amen. If it doesn't pass the test of God's word, we should not be um, doing it. We should not be included in stuff that's, that's, that's not inspired by the will of God. Amen. That's not inspired by the word of God. Amen. We must be uh, under the, the word of God. Amen. That's what's going to change us. That's what's going to make us ready for the, for the rapture. Amen. I'm not just going through the, through the motions of life. I'm, I, want to, I, I want to live victorious in this life. I want to be um, one who is able not only to save myself, but all those also to help others get saved. Amen. Amen. That's what God, that's my purpose in life. 
Amen. That's my purpose in life, to teach the will of God to others. But it hits me first. It hits me first. I must first be a partaker. Amen. I must first be a partaker. Therefore, then I'm able to help other people. When you when you when you go to a to the beach or to a swimming pool, you know, the lifeguard, you don't have a lifeguard that can't swim. You have a lifeguard who is proficient in his job, in his abilities. Amen. They know the job. They know what to do, how to go up under them, pull one to safety, and then what to do to if they're not breathing to get them to breathe again. They know what to do. You don't have a person out there that don't know what to do trying to call themselves a lifesaver. Amen. So it is with the kingdom of God. We must be first partakers and be able to 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 navigate through the things of this world to enable to get others to save others. Amen. Not that we do the saving. God is just using us as willing vessels on his behalf. Amen. We're not doing this on our own. It's because of God that we're able to do these things. Amen. All right. Sorry about getting off. But um, verse number four, God, who is rich, he's rich. The Greek, the Greek, he says, it means as being rich in mercy. God, as being rich in mercy. For, that is, because of his great love. So God, as being rich in mercy, because of his great love, this was the special ground of God saving us as rich in mercy. Compared, um, we look at verse 7 and then, um, and even in chapter 1, verse 7, Romans chapter number 2, verse 4, and, and, and Romans chapter 10, verse verse 12. We're going to get in that in a few minutes. We'll read those two, two verses. But as we go on, it says here, um, that was the, the general ground. Mercy takes away misery. Love confers salvation. That's from bingo. Amen. Verse number 5 it lets us know quicken. That word quicken, it means to be made alive, right? God has quickened us. He's made, we were once dead in trespasses and sins, the scripture says, right? So now we have been made alive, and that's through grace, that unmerited favor, amen. Amen, unmerited favor, amen. Grace, the grace of God. I remember years ago, um, it was a brother Alonzo Smith used to sing a song for our pastor. Um, I had a debt I couldn't pay. He paid a debt that he not he did not owe. See, I had the debt and I couldn't pay it. I I, I couldn't afford. I couldn't afford to pay it. Jesus paid the debt that he didn't even owe. Amen. I needed someone to wash my sins away. Amen. Jesus was that someone who washed my sins away, who paid my debt. The wages of sin is death. Death. D-E-A-T-H. Amen. But the, uh, the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I couldn't afford it. I, could, I wasn't able. I was not able to pay the debt that I had. Amen. But God paid it through the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. I'm grateful. I'm so grateful. Amen. All right. So Romans chapter number two, verse number four, Paul lets us know, or despises thou the riches of his goodness and forbearance and long suffering, not knowing that the goodness of God lead, leadeth thee to repentance. It's God's goodness that leads, that led us and that st continues to lead us to repentance. Amen. It's his goodness. Why is he so good? Hallelujah. I don't know why. In the name of Jesus, I thank you, Lord. The riches of his goodness and forbearance 
and long suffering. This word long suffering in the Hebrew in the, in the Old Testament when it spoke of God as being long suffering, that meant he was he was slow to anger. Slow to anger. We deserved his anger, but he's slow to anger. So it is now. It means the same. He's slow to anger. Amen. And if I have this spirit, and this is, this long suffering is one of the fruit of the spirit, and I have his spirit, right? So I'm able to be long suffering as well. That means I'm, I should be slow to anger. When people walk against me or do things against me, I'm slow to anger. Amen. That's the way it should be. We should be slow to anger. We should not be going off every every drop of a, a pen and every time somebody comes against or even attempts to even look like they're going to say something. We should not be getting angry. Amen. Now, the Bible says, be ye angry, but he also said, and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath, neither give place to the devil. So, that, I'm not saying don't be angry. Some things will make you angry, but that doesn't mean that you're to just follow through with all the stuff that comes after it, or, you know, in the you know in the flesh. Um, we should be slow to anger, and I know that's that's a hard saying. I know that's you know easy to said than done. But as we as we continue to grow in the Lord, and as we continue to allow His Word to work on us, Amen, and to transform us, at some point. We should be able to be, you know, what God is calling for. Amen. We, at some point, we should not be making excuses for the flesh. At some point, you know, people ought to be able to experience God through me. Amen. They ought to be able to experience because I, Jesus said, if I be lifted up from the earth, I'll be draw, I'll, I'll draw all men unto me. Amen. I believe, you know, I, I look at that like if He's lifted up in me. If I lift up Jesus in me, then he will do the drawing. And so when people look at me, they'll no longer see me as old me. They'll see the new me, and they'll see Lord, the Lord Jesus Christ working in me. Amen. All right? At some point, we become living epistles. My, my life ought to be just like, this, like, just like the Bible. My life, that's the way my life should be just like the Bible. Amen. That's the transformation that must take place in all of our lives. Amen. And I know it takes time because salvation, you know, it's a, it's a process. It is a process. But I, I should not be the same way that I was when I first got saved, you know, or, you know, five years, ten years later, I'm still doing the same thing. No, that shouldn't be. That should not be. I should be changing into the likeness of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. That's one of the things that was I believe that was lost in the garden. The Bible lets us know that that uh, Adam was created in the likeness of God, in the image and likeness of God. Sin entered in through Adam's disobedience and changed that. So when Adam, you know, Adam had two sons, Cain and Abel. Cain killed Abel, right? And then he was sent off. But then um, another son was born by the name of Seth. And the Bible at that point lets us know that Seth was born in the image of Adam. In the image and likeness of Adam. Not in the image and likeness of God because sin had already separated mankind from God. Now Adam has another son in his own image and likeness. That At that point, is a fallen image and likeness. That's why we must be born again. Years later, decades, you know I mean? Thousands of years later, God, in God's plan, in the fullness of time, God sent forth his son made of a woman made under the law. Why? To redeem mankind back, you know. So um, here we are having experienced this new birth. Now we have the ability to become what God wants of us. Amen. To become as um, the first chapter's lesson dealt with, the first chapter of Ephesians dealt with um, 
our you know our 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 um you know coming to that place and understanding you know where we uh take on the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of him amen that whole thing is it's all about the transformation it's all about what we become after we get saved amen all right so let me go on before i spend too much time there all right so then um Romans 10 and 12, for there is no difference between the Jew and the Gentile, for the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. Amen. So God, you know, he wants us to call upon him. Amen. St. John 1, 17, for the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. Amen. Um, that verse in, in, in St. John chapter number uh, 1, verse 17 grace through grace though grace was manifested in the old testament in genesis chapter number six verse number eight that's the occasion the bible lets us know that noah found grace amen exodus chapter number 34 verse number six that's the one we're going to deal with all right um jeremiah chapter number 31 verse number uh, three um it was but a candle you know, the grace that was that was shown in the Old Testament was but a candle compared to the brightness of the grace that appeared at the incarnation. That was the Lord Jesus Christ. Being incarnation mean, you know, he was born of a virgin. He was in the womb of Mary, right? By the Holy Ghost. Amen. Right? So, um, what Old Testament grace, grace that was presented? It says it was as far as the brightness compared to the brightness of the that appeared in the in 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 at the incarnation. Titus chapter number two, verse number eleven, uh, the grace of God has appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lusts, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world, looking for the blessed hope. And the glorious appearing of our great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. So grace is the unmerited favor and is the basis of our salvation. It's the basis of our salvation, our justification, our election, our faith, and spiritual gifts. Amen. Grace is the, is the, is the basis of all that. Amen. It's God's favor. God's favor toward us. Amen. This is what we experience. We experience our salvation, our justification, our election. God elected us. Amen. I didn't choose him. He chose me. He did, you didn't choose him. He chose you. God chose you. Out of all your siblings, out of all your friends, out of all that were around you, God came and chose you out of the mix and set us on a new path. Thank you, Jesus. Our faith, spiritual gifts, Romans chapter, I mean, Ephesians chapter 1, verse 7, Romans chapter 3, verse 24, chapter 11, verse 5 and 6. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9, Romans 12 and 6. I hope you're writing these scriptures down. If you if you missed any, you just, just watch the video again. Amen. Titus 2, 11, For the grace of God that bringeth salvation has appeared to all men. Amen. Grace has appeared. And the brightness is way brighter than those candles of grace in the Old Testament. Amen. Exodus 34 and 6. And the, and the Lord, Yahweh, passed by before him and proclaimed the Lord, Yahweh, the Lord God, Yahweh Elohim, merciful and gracious, Merciful and gracious, 
Here's a, that word again, long suffering and abundant in goodness and truth. Amen. Abundant. Not just a little bit. God, he's abundant in goodness and truth. Amen. That's what I need on my side. Amen. I need God's goodness on my side. Amen. I need the truth on my side. Amen. I need long suffering on my side. I need his grace and mercy on my side. Amen. That word uh, gracious is an adjective meaning gracious, merciful. This word is used solely as a descriptive term of God. This is how God is described. He's gracious and he's merciful. The Lord used this word when he revealed himself to Moses, Exodus chapter 36, verse number 34, verse number 6. He used that, that, that word, and we see it here in the verse. All right? As one who is above all else, above all else, merciful and abounding in compassion. Psalm 86, verse number 15. Psalm 103, verse number 8. Elsewhere, it expresses the Lord's response to the cry of the oppressed. Amen. God's response to the cry of the oppressed, hallelujah, is gracious. He's gracious. He's merciful. Exodus chapter number 22, verse number 27. His treatment of those that reverence him. Hallelujah, God is gracious. He's gracious toward those who reverence him. Psalm 111, verse number 4. Psalm 112, verse number 4. His attitude toward those who repent. Hallelujah. Joel chapter number 2, verse number 13. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. His mercy in the face of of rebellion. God's merciful. Amen. In the face of rebellion. Let's look at uh, Joel. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I'll leave you with Joel chapter number 2. Thirteen. Thank you, Jesus. I got tears in my eyes again. He says, rip your hearts to pieces. This is the Amplified Version. Rip your heart to pieces in sorrow and contrition and not your garments. Now return in repentance to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and compassionate. Slow to anger. I told you that word long-suffering is slow to anger. Abounding in loving kindness. Faithful to his covenant with his people. Amen. God is faithful. God makes a, an agreement with you. God will keep his part. Amen. It's up to us to keep our part. God will keep his, his covenant with his people and he relents his sentence of evil when his people genuinely repents. Amen. When you genuinely repent, God changes his mind concerning, you know, his sentence. Amen. Against us. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Let me look at Psalm one, one, Psalm one eleven. Thank you, Jesus. Psalms one eleven, verse number four. He has made his wonderful acts to be remembered. The Lord is gracious and merciful, and full of loving compassion. 
That's what I need on my side. Someone who's gracious and merciful and full of loving compassion. Amen. I need that on my side. Not only did I, did I need it in the past, but I need it now on my side. You need it too on your side. If you'll be, if, if you'll be honest with yourself, you need it too on your side. Because we don't always do everything we're supposed to do. But his compassion. Hallelujah. He doesn't just destroy us. He gives us space to repent. Amen. His loving kindness toward us. Hallelujah. Loving kindness and his compassion toward us. It leads us. We read in Romans. It is the goodness of God that leads us to repentance. God's goodness. Hallelujah. It leads us to repentance. We should be repenting all day, every day. We should have a, a repentful heart. Amen. Not a hard heart, but one that can be changed. One that can be moved. One that can repent. Amen. A hard-hearted person is a bad place to be in. Amen. If you're hard-hearted, that's not a good place. Amen. You ought to have a heart of repentance, one that's able to say you're sorry, one to be able to, you know, just, hallelujah, make things right. Be wanting to or willing to make things right, amen, between you and your God, amen. And then also between you and, and others that are in relationship with you, amen. Whether it's your, 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 your family, your siblings, your mother, father, you know, your spouse, amen. You should be able to, to, to make things right through repentance, amen. Don't be so hard that nobody, you know, is able to get to you or, or, or nobody's able to, to, or you can't reach out to people and, you know, God, God reached out to us. God, I told you he came and plucked us out. He came and got us out of the, the, the conditions that we were in. Don't be so hard that you can't reach out to others and get them, help them out of situations. Amen. God is not willing that any should perish, but all come to repentance. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We see Esau having, you know, that judgment against him. You know, he he was, you know, the Bible lets us know that he sought repentance, even with tears, but he wasn't able to find it. So you ought to praise God for repentance. Amen. Being able to change, being able to change your mind concerning God, being able to change your heart. Amen. That's the goodness of God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I'm so grateful. Hallelujah. This is where we come to the to the to the things that matter. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Did I miss something? Make sure I didn't miss anything. In the last one. Yes. Oh yeah, I wanted to look at uh, Nehemiah. Thank you, Jesus. Nehemiah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. This is verse 17, but I'm going to start a few verses ahead. Verse number 15. You gave them bread from heaven for their hunger and brought water for them out of the rock for their thirst. Talking about their experience in the wilderness. The children of Israel, their experience in the wilderness, as God brought them out of the land of Egypt and was taken to the promised land, God fed them bread from heaven, which was called manna. It wasn't even, you know, living bread. As Jesus said, I'm the living bread that came down from heaven. He said, your fathers did feed you manna in the wilderness, and they are dead. But I am the true bread. That came down from heaven. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's the bread I want. Hallelujah. That's the bread he's offering today. Amen. The bread of life. Hallelujah. That's through the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. This thing, hallelujah. All you, hallelujah. As you, once you're born again, as you go into God's word, God's word, if you just spend time there, just read it. It will open up and enlighten your mind. It will change your thinking. Amen. 
Hallelujah. I, the word of God should change. It should wash you. The word is, is able to wash you and make you clean. Hallelujah. But as you read it, it, it just keeps enlightening. I want to be enlightened by the word of God. Hallelujah. He said, again, you gave them bread from heaven for their hunger and brought water for them out of a rock for their thirst. That rock in the wilderness that followed them, that the water came, that gave water, that rock was Christ. Amen. The Bible lets us know. Hallelujah. He gave them water out of a rock. Hallelujah. And that was for their thirst. You told them to enter and take possession of the land you swore to them. You told them. Go on in. Take possession of the land. Hallelujah. I, I'm giving you this land. The holy land. The land that all the contention is happening over in the Middle East today. God gave them that land. Gave the Israelites that land. Thank you, Jesus. A land that you swore to give them. But they, our fathers, acted arrogantly. They stiffened their necks and would not heed your commands. Amen. They acted arrogantly. If you're an arrogant person, you need to let that go. Arrogance. Let it go. God hates it. They acted arrogantly. They stiffened their necks and would not heed your commandments. They refused to listen and obey and did not remember your wondrous acts which you had performed among them. So they stiffened their necks and in their, in their rebellion appointed a leader in order to return them to slavery in Egypt. But you are a God of forgiveness, gracious and merciful and compassionate, slow to anger and abounding in loving kindness. And you did not abandon them. Imagine that. Someone comes to get you out of prison and starts to lead you along the way. Oh, I'm hungry, I'm hungry. Then he feeds you. Oh, I'm thirsty, I'm thirsty. Then he gives you water. Gives you something to drink, right? And he continues to take care of you. As they were walking through, their shoes didn't even wear out in, the, in that wilderness journey. Everything they had need of, God prepared. Because God, he's a God of, he's a great I am. Whatever you need, that's what I'll become. Amen. That's what I am. Amen. I am. That's my name. Hallelujah. So he takes care of you along your way. And then you get to the point, you get arrogant. And you refuse to listen and obey. Get stiff-necked. And then you forget what he has already done for you and bring you out of bondage, out of slavery, out of whatever your situation was that you had no control of getting out of yourself. You were not able to pull yourself out of the quicksand that you were in. God did it. Then he's taking you along the way. He's giving you bread when you're hungry, giving you water when you're thirsty. And then you turn your back on them. You turn your back on them. So they, he says, and did they refuse to listen and obey and did not remember your wondrous acts, acts which you had performed among them. They didn't remember anything. You don't remember anything. When God brought you out, you don't remember where you were out there in the world? I remember. 
I remember every little thing. Because even when I wasn't saved, when I wasn't even looking for him, I look back and I see that it was him working in my life. It was him working in my life when they were shooting at us. It was him working in my life when, 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 when I was too high to even get around. I was, I was out of my mind. It was him that was working, that delivered me. In areas of around town that was just ruthless, but he had angels encamped about me. Doing the things that I was doing foolishly, God protected me. Hallelujah. Every step of the way, I look back. Hallelujah, hallelujah. My soul looks back and wonder how I got over. Hallelujah. There is meaning to those songs. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. The Lord was there. When I wasn't even aware, he was there. Hallelujah. I wasn't looking for him, but he found me. I didn't find him. He found me. I was the one lost. You can't re forget what God has done for you. Don't ever forget. Hallelujah. But they forgot. They forgot what he did. They were stiff-necked. And then they had the nerve to appoint a leader to take them back into slavery. Back into slavery. To return them to slavery in Egypt. Egypt is a type of the world. <coughs> Excuse me. Egypt is a type of the world, but you are a God of forgiveness. You're gracious. You're merciful and compassionate. Slow to anger and abounding in foreknowledge. And you did not abandon them. Uh, even when they had made for themselves that golden calf and said, these are the gods that brought you out of the land of Egypt. Even in this point right here, and even later on, God still did not abandon his people. God will not leave you. He said, I will never leave you nor forsake you, but I'll be with you to the end. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. All right, now let me go on. Thank you, Jesus. Here's where we come to the to the close. Amen. You want to experience you you want to experience new life. You want to experience uh, what God has for you moving forward. Jesus said to Nicodemus in Saint John chapter number three, verse number three. Jesus answered and said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Amen. You want to, you can't, unless you're born again, you can't see the kingdom of God. We read a little while ago about a, a, a reference being made about being born from above. That's, and I mentioned being born again at that point. This is what he's talking about. You must be born again or else you cannot see the kingdom of God. Verse number five, he says, Jesus answered, Nicodemus responds, how can a man be born again when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born again? Jesus said, answered that question and said, verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of the water and of the spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Amen. So if you haven't been born again, you're not in the kingdom of God. Amen. The way to be born again um, on the day of Pentecost, when, the, you know, in verse number one and through four, it lets us know on the day of Pentecost when the, that the Holy Ghost came, right? When the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were in all in one place with one accord. And suddenly, he said, suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting, right? From the Amplified, when the day of Pentecost had fully come, right? 
They were all together in one place, and suddenly a sound came from heaven like a r mighty rushing wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. And there appeared to them uh, tongues resembling, resembling fire, which were being distributed among them. And they rested on each of them, as each person received the Holy Ghost. And they were all filled with, that is, diffused throughout their being with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues, different languages, as the Spirit was giving them the ability to speak out clearly and appropriately. Amen. They were all filled with the Holy Ghost. And then, so then people there begin to say, oh, these men are, are drunk. Oh, they're full of new wine. You know, in, in Peter's response, Peter stood up with the 11 and preached. And then at the end of that preaching of Peter, um, verse number 37, they said, men and brethren, what shall we do? Peter's response, then Peter said unto them, repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Amen. That's how one is made alive. You must be born again of the water and of the spirit. Amen. That's where your journey begins. Your journey in this uh, discipleship, this, this journey, your journey in this new life with Christ, it begins at the new birth. Amen. That's where you, that's, that's where it all starts. You must repent. Amen. You must repent and be born again of the water and of the spirit. And then you go follow the book of Acts. Read the book of Acts. Throughout the whole book of Acts, every occasion where someone was uh, uh, born again, you know, you see them be, being baptized in Jesus' name. You see them receiving the gift of the Holy Ghost, uh, speaking in other tongues as the Spirit of God give others. Amen. You know, or baptized in the name of the Lord, which is Jesus. Amen. Jesus is the name of the Lord. Amen. So, again, you want to be made alive in Christ, ye must be born again. Amen. All right. And this is just a few scriptures I laid out. There's much more. Amen. But come back. Come back with us. Amen. All right. Come back. All right. Thanks for, you know, I, I thank you for joining us today. I thank you for being with us today, uh, follow us on um, social media again, amen. Share these videos with your friends, amen. Go back to my Facebook page and you'll see all the other videos that I've done. And um, uh, we hope to see you again, amen. But follow us on Facebook, follow us, amen. And share these videos, drop your comments in the comment section, amen. Let us know if these messages are, are helping you. I want to know also... Where are you listening from? Amen. Where are you? Let us know in the comment section where, you know, where, where are you? You know, where are you? Meaning, uh, what, what city, state, country? Where are you? Amen. Let us know in the comment section. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. All right. So I thank God for this opportunity. I've been in your presence today and been able to, to deliver you this message today. And I pray that. Um, you were able to take something with you, amen, that it was able to help you in some ways, amen. Um, even your prayer request, as I think about it, your prayer request, drop your, in, in the comments if you care to share your prayer request, amen. We don't have no details. If you, you want details, send me a, a direct message, me on Facebook, amen. All right, so um, through Messenger, and I could, you know, certainly, we'll certainly be praying for all that are out there, amen. And, Father God, we thank you for your kindness. Thank you, Lord God, for, for this opportunity, Lord God, to be before your people, Lord God. I pray, Lord God, that the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable unto thee in thy sight. O oh Lord, our strength and our redeemer, Lord. I pray for those that were able to hear today and those that will hear in the future, Lord God. I pray, Lord God, that those, whoever listens, Lord God, that your word be anointed to their hearts, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. I pray, Lord God, just have your way in our lives, Lord God. I pray for those that are sick among us, Lord God, those who need a special touch from you, Lord God. I pray, Lord God, you would do it, Lord. Lord, just have your way in our lives, Lord God. Hallelujah. 
by the authority of the word of God and the power of the name of Jesus, we declare healing in the lives of those who need healing, Lord. We pray, Lord God, just have your way, Lord God. Bless your people, Lord God. Hallelujah. Help us, Lord God, as we go out and help someone else, Lord God. In the name of Jesus, we thank you, we praise you, and we honor you, Lord God. Bless your people, Lord God. Bless us and keep us as, as our prayer, Lord God. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you, everybody. Amen. Bye now. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs>